And what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy, Cheap Ludes. I took a day off yesterday, but I am back. Not exactly refreshed, but I am here. So, we got new content in 2K. We got the Daryl Griffith Highlight Film Challenge, which I'm sure every 2K YouTuber has made three to four videos on this subject already. Something I do not like about the 2K YouTube community for the most part. Just make one video. Just one. Just cover everything with one. It's I promise it's okay. Anyways, Daryl Griffith looks okay so here's the thing we get three different daryl griffith cards which i think is sick we get an emerald a ruby and a diamond version not a standard evo card like they normally do it's actually three separate versions of the card and they're all like different eras of the player we got like a rookie daryl griffith we got like a kind of in his prime in the league daryl griffith and then we got a older grizzled veteran daryl griffith uh dr duncanstein looks okay he looks all right that is his actual nickname i did not make that up the challenges themselves are relatively decent. Um, they do involve using both the Daryl Griffith cards and jazz players, which is quite unfortunate. Um, and, of course, they involve multiplayer games. Hooray! Right? That's fun. So TTO is going to be an absolute hellscape. Like, there's no there's no way around it. Like, that's, that's just how it's going to be. Um make 92 three-pointers yeah here's the one win five games of triple threat online using jazz players three jazz players by the way uh triple threat offline is not that bad the iron the ironic part about this is most of the people that are going to be grinding for daryl griffith literally do not need him or will never use him that's always the very ironic part of 2k is the people who have the best cards that are going to be able to get daryl griffith easier than everyone else are going to be the guys who literally will never play a game with him. Or they'll play like two games because they have them to stunt on people and then never touch them again. That's my favorite part about 2K. As you can see, my Jazz collection is, uh, <clears throat> to say the least, rough. My best player is Carlos Boozer, tied with Jeff Hornacek. I have Brian Russell and Ennis Cantor as well. Uh, and another Daryl Griffith, funny to say. Uh, yeah, so the Jazz player pool is very bad. Now, that being said, if you want to go on to the market and sell some of your base set jazz guys because you don't care about Daryl Griffith, now's a good time because they are going to be expensive for the next day or so. Uh, I would say probably till later tonight they'll be expensive. John Stockton is probably the best uh, purchasable jazz player that we have available. I would say he is. Yeah, for sure. Just because the best jazz players are not even purchasable on the auctions, which really sucks like that super sucks if you're somebody who has ron boone you have just an astronomical advantage over everybody else now that being said definitely look through the base set jazz players to see what you have because you could have a bunch of mt in here i'll probably end up selling like brian russell and i don't know enos Cantor or whatever because i don't care and i'm gonna go for daryl griffith but if i don't get him i don't get him horn is sucks at goat though what a holographic horn set sick dude sick but yeah uh some of the best players in the game are like literally not even purchasable like ron boone so if you have him you already basically have daryl griffith at that point uh which i'm guessing if you log into tto you're gonna run into like a bunch of ron boons like for, for sure uh it's pretty unfortunate donovan mitchell starter donovan mitchell is another guy obviously he is somebody that people will be using as well i don't really know if there's any other jazz players so i'm going to go on 2k db real quick on my phone not on the video and see if there's anyone else uh, that qualifies for the jazz just because this is not a good time like the player pool if you don't have ron boone sucks real bad this gordon hayward has a dynamic duo with rudy gobert it doesn't make them that good, but uh, it could be worse, I suppose. All right, check the Utah Jazz. Oh, yeah, Marky Mark Eaton as well. I forgot. If you have Diamond Mark Eaton, you're in a kind of a good spot, I suppose. He's not really that good, but, you know, he'll help you. He'll be a defensive presence to anchor the middle. Well, yeah, really outside of uh, Daryl Griffith, I mean the Daryl Griffiths you get for actually is this the Bron killer Ronnie Brewer oh my word he couldn't shoot but he would lock LeBron down if anybody watched those 2010 to 2012 Bulls teams Ronnie Brewer was the Bron kryptonite it's my boy dude 
Danielle Marshall. I always wish we'd get a good Danielle Marshall card. I know he wasn't the greatest, but he's usually okay in 2K. Enos Cantor sucks, dude. It's I'm gonna have to use him too, probably. Or Boozer. Greg Ostertag. All right. Fun fact: I used to play NBA Live 05, and I would have Greg Ostertag as my starting center. My team was usually Sebastian Telfair, Tracy McGrady. Uh, I would usually rock Carmelo Anthony with Josh Childress on the bench, and then power forward fluctuated. Sometimes I'd rock Garnett. Uh, most of the time, I would rock Stromile Swift because he was sick. And then on the bench, I would run Greg Ostertag, and he would be juiced up, a little bit of speed additions and some post-play additions, and I would literally drop like 70 points. I think one season, he averaged like 82 points in NBA Live 05 for me on the Chicago Bulls, of course. It's really unrelated to Daryl Griffith, but... Uh, Coast to Coaster Tag was his nickname for only me, and he used to hold it down. But yeah, if you have Ron Boone, uh, yeah, you're going to be set up pretty good because he is just so much better than everybody else. And like, it's completely RNG too, so it's like totally sucks. I'll probably play TTO and just hope that I get Ron Boone before this, but I feel like his like amount percentage of drop or his drop rate is probably even lower today than it normally is but yeah there's a lot of mt to be made if you want to sell off your jazz players because you don't care about daryl griffith which i totally understand if you don't he doesn't look to be incredibly good he looks relatively decent he's got hall of fame limitless takeoff so he's going to be booming over everybody which is cool but i'm not even certain he's really better than ron boone like at all he does have three Hoff badges. Like, that's cool. He's got Limitless Takeoff, Bob City Finisher, and Posterizer. So he's going to be dunking over everybody. And you can give him most of the shooting badges, too. And I think he's got, what, an 84 three-pointer. So he's got a decent three-pointer. Jump shot 40, which is the same release as, like, Richard Hamilton and Jerry Sloan, which is a release I like a lot. So Daryl Griffith is looking pretty decent. Now, that being said, I'm probably not going to go for him. Uh, at least as hard as I normally would, like... I'm going to try, but if I lose three straight TTO games because I keep running into Ron Boone and I'm using Boozer, Hornacek, and like a gold, like Brian Russell, I'm going to be upset and I'm going to stop playing. Like, so we're going to see how that goes, I suppose, like realistically. I don't, I don't know. Look, it's tough. It's tough out here. If you have Ron Boone and if you have, let's say, Donovan Mitchell fully evoed, you're going to have a much better time. So, you know, you probably won't feel the level of frustration the rest of us who have neither of these things feel. And look, Joe Ingles is another good option, by the way. Um, if you want to go play that superstar challenge, get that Joe Ingles and get him evoed. But the evo is tough because you have to get five steals, which like super sucks with Joe Ingles. If you can get a Mevo, though, you definitely have one of the better Jazz uh, small forwards in the game. So, <sighs> look, this is going to be a tough one. Um, I did not expect them to do this at all. I'm glad they're not a standard Evo, though. Like, I'm glad they're doing this thing that's more in tune with, like, what MLB The Show does for their evolutions. You know, where they, it's actually three, two or three different cards, and you get to keep all of the cards. You don't have to just Evo them for no reason. I like that 2K did that. It's cool. You know, we got one Daryl Griffith. It's like, you know, in his rookie year or whatever. Then we got one that's like, you know, getting into his prime. And then we got one that's like the grizzled vet. That's sick. I don't know. I'm, I'm stoked on that. It's just a cool concept. Like, I'd like to see them do that with a guy like Chris Mullen. Or who's another guy that they always make a reward card? Kiki Vanderwee. Um, any of the Van Arsdales. I'm trying to think of other guys they always make. Dan Ice, Dan Issel, Dan Isel, whatever. Yeah, he's always a reward card. <laughs> Terry Dissinger, let's go. I don't know. If they do this more, I think it'd be really cool. I'm really stoked on this, so I hope it's a concept that they implement more often because I think it's way cooler than just one, you know, reward card to grind for. The challenge could use some work, but I mean, obviously, it'll be a little bit better when we get like a team, you know, or a player whose challenges are a little bit better because we have more options to use. Like, we haven't got a single promo player from the Jazz. That being said, I would not be shocked at all that the next primetime set that we get in the next couple days ends up having a Jazz player or two in it. Because if you guys looked, like, the Flash Packs disappeared already. And I know that's weird, but I have a theory on that as well. Also, like, don't even look at the pack timer because I swear it doesn't mean anything, like... 
primetime packs were supposed to disappear like today tomorrow but now there are four days left and then every day the colossal packs the colossal packs have never gone below 20. it's been a week and a half how how is that possible you ask well 2k just keeps resetting the timers i have no idea like we are getting primetime packs i think either tomorrow or wednesday i can't remember it doesn't matter i wouldn't be shocked to see some jazz players in there like a maybe donovan mitchell or gobert or something so stay on the lookout for that i am going to be dropping a video later where i talk about uh packs in general because if you guys haven't seen the aiden raw situation i'm not going to react to his like pack opening or whatever i just i don't feel like doing that that's like a really long pack opening and he puts lipstick on it's like very strange but anyways he spent like an absurd amount of money uh on vc to open packs to get derrick rose and didn't pull a single diamond or like basically didn't pull anything right and he was raging about it to like you know 50 something thousand people and like it's one thing when i make a pack opening i talk about how bad the odds are i have like 5,000 subscribers only like 2,000 of you actually watch the pack opening at a given time right so like people like myself and a lot of the other creators in the my team community that criticize packs they don't really have that outreach but uh he does and i would expect 2k to temporarily at least i don't think they'll do it for the entirety of the year but temporarily boost the pack odds, whether it says it or not. As always, it's been your boy Cheap Ludes, and uh, good luck on the Daryl Griffith grind. I appreciate all you guys, and I'll be back with more content later. So have a good day, man. Peace.